George Lucas's wonderful Star Wars spawned countless imitations from the late 1970s going into the 80s. Some were inspired, many were just plain daft. Luigi Cozzi's Star Crash, against the odds, somehow succeeded in being both. I'm Stephen Archibald and welcome to my movie podcast. Our galaxy is split into two warring factions, our own and the one ruled by the evil Count, Zarthan, from the League of the Dark World. The Count has created a weapon, a weapon so vast, so huge, that it would take a whole planet to conceal it. You must sail through the haunted stars. Hello, and welcome to my podcast, They Came From Within, Cult Movie Reviews. A stellar performance. Star Crash, 1978. The British beauty, Caroline Monroe, is best known the world over as a horror icon, but it was an Italian science fiction movie which provided her with her first leading role. Caroline portrays the feisty space pilot, Stella Star, in Luigi Cozzi's Star Crash or Scontri Stellari, Oltre la Terza Dimensione, to give you its original title. Stella and her buddy Acton are smugglers who get caught up with the forces of the evil Zarf Arm, who's essentially the Darth Vader act for this movie. Having escaped the clutches of the Imperial Space Police, Stella and Acton discover a survivor of an attack by Arn's men. This survivor fights for the benign emperor of the galaxy, who thanks Stella and Acton. They are then tasked by him with a mission of finding a powerful weapon and of locating the emperor's missing son, Simon. Stella and co will get tangled up in various close scrapes before this lively tale climaxes with an epic battle. Well, as epic as you can be on a small budget. Joe Spinell played Count Zarth Arn. He was undoubtedly a nice guy in real life, yet he excelled at playing villains. Joe looked tough and he carried an unnerving screen presence. In a coup for the filmmakers, the Emperor was played by the brilliant Christopher Plummer. Yes, the star of such movies as The Fall of the Roman Empire, The Silent Partner, Dolores Claiborne and The Insider. Christopher, whom the world lost in February 2021, was willing to admit why he took the role. The chance of visiting Italy for free was a great incentive. In an interview, Plummer exclaimed, Give me Rome any day. I'll do porno in Rome, as long as I can get to Rome. Getting to Rome was the greatest thing that happened in that for me. For his role, Christopher was offered $10,000 per day. The producers must have been relieved that he filmed most of his scenes in one day. The Emperor's son, Prince Simon, was played by a pre-fame David Hasselhoff. Compared to Star Wars, well, it shouldn't be compared to that great movie. But here goes. Its special effects look terrible. Its plot is chaotic and largely unintelligible. And most of the acting is subpar. But even so, Star Crash retains its power to charm, at least for some of us. It has vigour and energy, and it taps into the emotions you would have had as a child watching pantomime. Then again, there's nothing childlike about Miss Monroe in this movie, seeing as she wears a series of skimpy outfits. Cotsey's clearly a big Barbarella fan, 
And besides, he insisted that Star Crash was more a science fantasy movie than a science fiction one. And as with the movies Barbarella and Flash Gordon, this film does feature beautiful primary colours and production designs. And would you believe it has a fine music score provided by none other than John Barry. I suppose the filmmakers were quite wise not to show John Barry any of the movie before he composed the sublime music for it. The legendary Ennio Morricone had been asked to do the score first. He politely declined. You must sail to the haunted stars. Find the Count's secret planet and destroy it. Star Crash was beset by various problems. It took longer to make than was planned. The makers had financial problems and at one stage the cast came down with food poisoning. Luigi Cozzi was a huge fan of Ray Harryhausen and he originally conceived this film as Sinbad Goes to Space. Luigi had always wanted Caroline Monroe to play the lead role. No doubt due to the fact she appeared in the 1973 movie The Golden Voyage of Sinbad where Harryhausen did the stop motion effects. Stella's alien chum Acton was played by Marjo Gortner, a former evangelist preacher turned actor. His other cult movies include Earthquake, Bobby Joe and the Outlaw, which co-starred Linda Carter, and Mausoleum. The minuscule budget did not allow for Caroline Monroe to fly to the States to do any post-production vocal work. Therefore, her voice was dubbed by the American actress Candy Clark. Known for giving excellent performances in American Graffiti, The Man Who Fell to Earth, and Q, The Winged Serpent. Oh, and Candy was married to Marjo Gortner around the time in which this movie was made. Speaking of spouses, Caroline's first husband, Judd Hamilton, plays Elle, a robot who helps Stella on her precarious assignment. Judd also had his voice dubbed by someone else. Star Crash was filmed at the Chine Cheetah Studios in Rome, and location work was done in Morocco, Tunisia, and Switzerland, as well as in other parts of Italy. Filming commenced on the 15th of October, 1977, and continued for around six months. Unfortunately, Star Crash received largely terrible reviews upon its release, and it's even mocked by commentators to this very day. Mystery Science Theatre 3000 slated it in 2017, and the mega popular podcast, How Did This Get Made, ridiculed it in 2019. I'm among those who would rather laugh with Star Crash rather than at it. In a contemporary review by the monthly film Bulletin, there was a trace of praise, which stated, Star Crash intermittently achieves a kind of lunatic appeal as it lurches pell-mell from one casually fabricated climax to the next. And in more recent times, R.L. Schaffer of IGN referred to it as the single greatest sci-fi camp fest ever put on celluloid. And even the leading horror film director, Eli Roth, adores this film. And Rolling Stone magazine undoubtedly had its tongue in its cheek when it voted Star Crash at number 48 in their 50 Greatest Sci-Fi Movies of the 1970s poll in March 2020. Luigi Cozzi's directorial credits include Contamination from 1980 and Hercules, starring Lou Ferrigno from 1983. And Cozzi has also contributed to some of the works of the great Dario Argento. 
Oddly enough, I just recently got to see Cozzi's debut feature, Il Tonel Sotto Il Mondo, from 1969. This little experimental movie was based on Frederick Pohl's novella, The Tunnel Under the World. What's striking is that it has a very similar feel and approach to that of David Cronenberg's 1970 short movie, Crimes of the Future, and I never thought I'd get to make that sort of comparison. I'm Stephen Archibald, and thank you very much for listening to my podcast. They came from within Cult Movie Reviews. You can find all of my episodes from most podcast hosts. And if you like, you can even follow me. Take care of your good self, and bye-bye for now. The counters mined the planet with nuclear charges. We're all about to die. You know something, my boy? I wouldn't be emperor if I didn't have some powers at my command. Imperial battleship, halt the flow of time.